Father, we ask, oh God, even as I hide behind the cross, Lord, Father, speak to your people this morning. Father, Lord, make life out of your word in the life of your people. Let everyone receive that word that will bring healing, that will bring liberation, that will bring grammar, that will set your people free, free, and we keep your people, oh God, moving, that your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name, we have given thanks and prayed. Somebody shout hallelujah. Thank you. Let's be seated. Amen. The topic for us this morning is the power in the world. The power in the world as the Lord lives. As the Lord lives is a powerful word of God that springs forth power from the Lord and from those who depend on the Lord, on the word of God to, you know, cause things to manifest, to effect the power of God. And our scriptural reading this morning is taken from Genesis 1, 3 to 7. Genesis 1, 3 to 7. I read. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the water which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament and it was so. As it has been spoken from the words of the mouth of God, so God manifested it. God brought to pass everything on the surface of the earth by mere spoken word of his. Everything that he gave life, human being, animal, everything whatsoever that you and I are today is by the word of God. Simply put, he said, and the creation began to manifest on the surface of the earth. Because he has spoken and brought to pass all that he put through his word, he took glory, you know, in all those things. The word of God said he created us for his pleasure, and for his pleasure were we created. He rejoices at the works of his hands when he behoves you and I, and, you know, it gives him special pleasure. The word of God says in Psalm 50 verse 10, He is the owner of cattle upon thousand hills. Everything you can think of, he owns it. And he's, you know, because he has created us, he made us in his own image, he has special preference for, for us, for you and I. And he desires that everything he does, we will likewise do it. The word of God says in 2 Corinthians 1.20, he says, He is everlasting Father, and his words are yea and amen. His everlasting Father, he is so many things to us. You imagine everything that is glorious, that is wonderful, that is beautiful. He is our keeper, he is our refuge, he is our strength. Ever present God in times of need our help in helpless situation, our hope from now even to eternity he is, and much more. Despite everything he still prefers us to, every other creation of his. The word of God says in Psalm, it's 118 verse 1, he is good to us and is a merciful God even unto his own. Hallelujah. Despite all this love that he has for us, most
most times he gives he gives us the opportunity to to experience some issues, some situations. And those things he presents before us that is not always very palatable. Sometimes he he portrays it to us so that we can always be better. As he has taught for us that he wants us to be much, much better. So that we can display what he is that he has made us to be. Hallelujah. According to Deuteronomy 4.24, he says, the word of God says that he is a consuming fire. That same fire that, you know, portrays to be consuming, that when we walk through this, that fire, he refines us, he purifies us, he transforms us, and makes us much, much better. And that is the work of God to his beloved, you and I. That same fire that does us good, that, you know, he, he paints us in form of gold, because when you, when you refine a gold through, what, through fire, it comes out much better, much beautiful, much more valuable. And that is how God's hand is upon you and I, who are his beloved. That same fire that, you know, does us good, transforms us and makes us better, that same fire destroys and consumes our enemies. The word of God says in Hebrews 12, 29, for our God is a consuming fire. The fire of God does not devour his own. He makes his own better. But to enemy, he destroys. Hallelujah. Now we go to the world that he gives life to as the Lord lives. That statement as in the topic as the Lord lives relates to God's personal personality was a solemn oath used by God himself numerous times to highlight certain condition, the condition of promise, consequences, or even warning. That's what carries so much life. It carries so much power that when it proceeds from God, on God beloved, as he desires that you and I wield the power in his word, that God does something. According, according to Ezekiel 3 verse 11, God warns. I'm relating that statement as you know, the word of God as it wants it to be displayed as the Lord lives. According to Ezekiel 3 verse 11, God wants, as I live, said the Lord, I have no pleasure in the dead of the wicked, but that the wicked turns from evil and live. Turn ye from evil or you die. That is the word of God himself. He comes out in form of warning. That statement warning his own children. On the other word, he's also warning his enemy through that word. That is the word that carries the promise of God. That carries the warning of God. In the case of promise, in Exodus 6, 2-7, God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. And then he went ahead in subsequent chapters, you know, to make the promise his promise known to his children of what he intends to do and how he intends to bring out his children out of bondage from the hand of the enemy into his promised land that he has, you know, declared to them from their forefathers. That is the promise of God through his word. And at the end, God made his promise, you know, manifest in the life of his children. In consequence to the same word in Exodus 6 verse 1, the Lord said to Moses, Now shall thou see what I will do to Pharaoh, for with a strong hand shall I let them go. With a strong hand he promised to let his children go out of Egypt from the hand of the taxmasters. And of course, subsequently we saw what God did. He unleashed his plague against the enemy. The word of God that is powerful. Praise the Lord. Another consequence of the word, as Elijah portrays the position of God, when he declared to Ahab, uh, to Ahab in 1 Kings 17 verse 1, as the, Lord, as the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain this year. 
but according to my words. And so it was according to the word of the prophets of God. What did the word of God do there? The word of God spring forth power. The power for healing, the power to make it possible, possible, the power for blessing, the power for miracles, the power that is favorable in the life of his children. And on the contrary, that power, that same power that favors his people, that, that same power unleashed judgment against the enemy of God. Praise the Lord. Also, King Solomon in 1 Kings 2.24 also aligned himself to that word which evoked power. You and I today, like Elijah, in the days of Elijah, God has put his word in our mouths to weld that power against our adversaries, against our circumstances, against our situations. Have we positioned ourselves to utilize that power in the word of God? And then so that we can shift our life, ourselves, from attitude of Bambiala. We know what Bambiala is. Bambiala is attitude of begging. Every time we need down to beg God, say, God, please, God, please, I want this thing. I want that thing. Elijah did not go indoor to ask God, please, ah, let these people know that I am of you. Let them know that I, 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 your power is mighty in my life. Father, you, you, as I come out, show to these people and seize the rain. No. He simply tapped, connected to that power and said, as the Lord God leads, when you, you make boast of the power of God through his word like that, something happens. Impossible becomes possible. Heaven moves. Hallelujah. That is what is expected of you and I. Now, in reference to that statement again, we say it is a statement of expression of confidence in God's power and ability to make things happen. When you express confidence in the power of God, you are calling God to attention. You are commanding God. You are showing God that I am you, I'm, I am yours. I want that power that is in you to be transferred to me so that things can happen. So that the enemy can know that I, I am truly of yours. Hallelujah. It is a declaration that shows that the one trusting in God is making a boast in God's supremacy over situations. You are just showing to the situation on ground that the power of God in you is able to change that situation. Hallelujah. He portends evoking the power of God to bring about action. Some actions, particularly to the children of God, are favorable, are transforming. It's beneficial in every way you want it to happen. But to enemy, it unleashed destruction. The enemy experiences the other side of God. Why the people of God experience his loving kindness, his mercy, his blessings, his presence in a normal way. Praise the Lord. That is to say that God is swearing by himself or by his name of what he will do or of his capacity. Of course, you and I know that God rules in the affairs of humanity. Hallelujah. The word of God in Hebrew 4 verse 12 made us understand that the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joint and marrow, and is the designer of the thought and intent of heart. God has his words. He sent his words on around. He commands it. He wears it as it pleases him. That word does not go and come back and say, ah, God, I know, I know if you see what you send you. Mm -mm. It's not like that with the word of God. And we so also with us. When we connect to that power in faith, we decree it in and it comes to pass. And that is why the word of God tells us 
that we decree a thing on earth, what happens, it is established in heaven. Hallelujah. So God accordingly designed as an intent of designer of the heart of man, he designed the heart of Pharaoh and he hardened the heart of Pharaoh. And of course, Pharaoh did not live to give account of what happened. In retrospective, the statement as the Lord lives is a display of faith. A belief that God exists through times. It is a living word, a word vibrant with life, a word that carries the power of life and the power of transformation. It is persistent word, a word that is active in us until our spirit and soul and joint and marrow are divided or parted. Hallelujah. The word of God is powerful. Is powerful when it proceeds from him. The Lord God made us in his own image. And the word of God says that we are also as God. What God does with his word, you and I are much more able to do it. In our life, in our situation, in our circumstances, in our environment, wherever we find ourselves, we should be able to display that boldness. Hallelujah. We should be able to make boast the word of God by faith. And as we decree, we see the word of God, you know, going on errand for us, you and I. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. So who are the people who amongst you and I are qualified to use the word of God the way we want it. Anyhow we want it. Whichever situation we want it. Those that he has made in his own image. Has he made anyone here in his own image? What are we doing with this word? Because some of us are hiding. Sometimes we're even afraid of the word of God. The word of God truly is quick and powerful. We should make instruments out of that word. As we make instruments out of the word of God, we should also make life out of the word of God. Make a living with it. Use it as a weapon against our enemies because that is the only thing that the enemy fears the word of God without the word of God in you the enemy will toss you up and down now as we take over position as the chosen and elect of God we need to constantly declare and apply the power of God in our statement to make things happen to bring God's promise to fulfillment effect consequences against our adversaries and to warn the wicked and sinner against the impending and looming danger. Hallelujah. So we declare, let's rise up to declare with the word of God that is quick and powerful. The Lord first displayed that word and we watched things happen. The prophet of God follows suit you and I this morning, as we make this declaration, the impossible will become possible in the name of Jesus. Let's say, as the Lord lives, you shall live, but not die. As the Lord lives, you are healed and made whole of that sickness, and we declare the yoke of sickness destroyed. As the Lord lives, you shall conceive and bring forth children and yoke of barrenness is destroyed. As the Lord lives, you are born of bone, and flesh of flesh shall locate you, and you shall be married. As the Lord lives, you shall be prosperous, and yoke of poverty shall be destroyed. As the Lord lives, 
you shall be a lender to nations and not a borrower. As the Lord lives, you shall walk in victory. As the Lord lives, affliction shall not rise against you. The second time, as the Lord lives, begin to walk your destiny out of failure, out of poverty, out of sickness, into prosperity, into success, into promotion, into upliftment, into joy unlimited. As the Lord live, you shall receive double honor for your shame. As the Lord live, you shall overcome all form of lack and begin to live a life of abundance to the glory of the Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Somebody shout hallelujah. God bless you.
in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for the life of your daughter that has come to you with one tenth of the Akim. We ask, so God, that the source of this income shall never diminish. You continue to bless and prosper the works of our hands to the glory and praise of your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, ma. All right, it's time to give our offering. So please, can we package a befitting offering to our God while we stand to our feet to dance and celebrate Jesus? And for emphasis, please, as we take this offering, we'll be taking two offerings. Today, is, we're going to be taking our CSR offering as well. So after this general offering, the ushers will go around again to take the CSR offering. But first, let's take our general offering first. Choir, please. Can we be upstanding? Creator of the universe. What can't you do? What can't you do? Jesus. Name above every other name. What can't you change? What can't you change? Jesus. You are like what Jesus will lift up 
Do we have children in the house? Children shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes, the children's celebration will be coming up on the 29th of this month. So all parents are expected to support our children with snacks, rice, drinks, party packs, etc. So please let's support our children to make their celebration a befitting one. So please, that will be happening on the 29th of this month. Let's encourage our children, let's support them, and bring whatever you know you have to support this celebration. Evangelism members are expected to wait behind at the close of the second service to meet with the pastor. Please, all members of the evangelism team, wait behind for a crucial meeting with our Father and the Lord, and attending members as well are encouraged to as well wait. Now, like we have said earlier, our services, we have two services here. But for the purpose of next Sunday, we're going to be having just one single service. So next Sunday will be a combined service because we're having a special guest. Our ministry is Pastor Chima Imoke. So please, next Sunday, come prepared. We have a special guest that will be ministering to us. Come ready because God is out to bless us again in great ways. Amen. All church food board team members are expected to wait after this end of the second service. You know how to use your legs very well for football. Please want to use those legs. Please endeavor to wait behind at the close of the second service so that you can go represent us. This is because we are having a football match with another church. So please, they are asking that you should make use of your legs for us. So please wait at the end of the second service. ND holders are needed for a back opportunities. So please see admin at the usher stand. You are an ND holder and you feel like working in the bank, please meet with the church admin. A quick reminder for the youth as well, they are expected to wait after the second service for a brief meeting with the youth president. Please all youth in the house, wait behind for a brief meeting with the youth president at the end of this service. All children teachers, please all children teachers are expected to wait for a brief meeting with the pastor at the end of the second service as well. Children teachers, please let's not be in a hurry to go. Let's wait behind for a brief meeting with the pastor at the end of this second service. I think that's all we have for this service. Let's be upstanding as we give God praise for all he has done for us. Let's appreciate God. He has done great things in our midst. To him be all the glory. Choir, please give us a redeemer assignment.
May the power, O God, of your word be made known in my life. May there be results, O God, on our account of your word that I have received, O God, this morning. May your word work wonders. May your work work wonders in our life, in our family, in our businesses, in all we do. Pray unto God. May he hear your voice. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Father, we thank you, O God, for visiting us again, O God, via your word this morning. Thank you, O God, for the encounter we have received from you. We ask, O God, as we go in this week, Father, may your word continue to work wonders in our life. In the name of Jesus, Father, we decree upon our life in this week, O God, we shall see your divine favor on account of your word we have received. In the name of Jesus, we decree that lines are falling unto us in pleasant places. In this week, O God, it shall be a blessed week unto us. We are divinely protected from all evils. In the name of Jesus, may your light continue to shine through our lives. In the name of Jesus, I decree that the blood of Jesus shall be a shield over your life, over your household, your children, and all that pertains to you. The blood of Christ will continue to speak for you. In the name of Jesus, no evil is permitted to come near your household. In the mighty name of Jesus, go and do well, go and prosper, go and excel, go and flourish on every side. You are most blessed. Blessed be your name, Father, because we know no God to you shall be all the glory. Be thou exalted, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and forever. Amen. Shalom. Please let's wait.